Good evening everybody, it's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed weather forecast because we got a winter storm to talk about by the middle of this upcoming week that could be pretty significant. We are talking about maybe some heavy snow, strong winds, and some colder temperatures. Now before I do get started, I have a couple of announcements to share with you all. The first one is very important. If you haven't already, please take the YouTube channel survey. There's a link in the description below this video. This helps me um, know of what you guys want me to do for the channel to make it better, um, to make more live streams, to make more videos possible. So make sure you do take that YouTube channel survey. There's a link in the description. And not only that, if you haven't been part of the Mesovort WX weather website, you could become a member today. It is 100% free where you all could um, check out our home feed, what we have been uploading, what we've been talking about, and you can see what we're about and everything like that. So if you haven't already, please be sure to check out those two links. They're in the description below this video. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about this ugly storm that could be impacting your area by Wednesday and Thursday this upcoming week from the February 7th through the 10th time frame kind of deal depending on where you're at. So this is a look at the European model for Tuesday morning, February the 7th, and we can see what's on the map here looking pretty good. Um, not so much in the way of storms, maybe a couple of showers from here and there from northern Texas into Oklahoma into the Great Lakes, maybe a little bit of snow for northern Wisconsin, but overall the pattern is quiet, but wait until you see with what goes on down here. In fact, let's go forward in time. By Wednesday morning, February the 8th, we can see there is a little bit of snow down here. Now, the last time we had a system in this similar trajectory, we had a lot of freezing rain. We had a lot of problems, right? This time, it looks to just be a snow event for northern Texas, for central and western Oklahoma. But a lot of moisture coming in from the south here over southeastern Texas, over Arkansas, over Louisiana. There will be severe weather with this, I'm sure. We could be looking at a marginal to slight risk, maybe even an enhanced risk for severe weather by the middle of next week. But of course, it is a little too far out for the SPC to really declare anything down here yet as far as severe weather goes. But we're going to have some sort of issues down here with heavy rain, flooding, and severe weather. So that's Wednesday morning. By Wednesday afternoon, that's where the system is. Still bringing quite a bit of rain for these areas. More flood concerns are expected, but watch this. Once this system gets far enough north, we're going to see quite a bit of heavy snow on this. This is for Thursday afternoon and evening, February the 9th, 2023. And we can see the dark blue colors on your screen stretching all the way from northern Kansas into Nebraska into Iowa, um, Minnesota. If you're in, say, um, central and northern uh, Wisconsin, if you're in northern Michigan, we're talking about a wet snow here. It's not going to be the dry snow that prevents a lot of problems, right? Because usually when it's dry, it blows around. It doesn't accumulate very well on the roadways. But when it's wet like this, it's a lot of slush into it. Um, it could freeze a little bit. So we could get crunchy snow. And if that lands on power lines, trees, we could see some down power lines. How about that? We could also see more accidents, more spin out because of the wet snow that accumulates. So this could be a big problem if you are in Wisconsin, if you are in Minnesota, if you are in the Iowa and northern Michigan area. This kind of falls apart a little bit by the weekend. So by, say, Friday night into Saturday, kind of uh, stretches. So it's not really concentrated here. But still, we're talking a little bit about snow in some of these areas. Not to mention, we're also talking about the continuation of maybe some severe weather here for the Carolinas and for Georgia by Thursday into Friday. And then a second piece of this system may reamplify by next weekend on the 11th of February. And then that's out of here. When we take a look at the GFS model, because we, again, we got to compare two models. I'm not here just to show you just one model and that's it. So let's take a look. The GFS model, the 18Z run, is pretty in big disagreement. Not really having much on the European model for some reason. It's because it's the GFS. What do you expect, right? We'll see, though. 
Is the GFS right or is the European model right, right? We just don't know yet. But what we do know is there's a system by the middle of next week that kind of has our attention, right? New guidance indicates that. So Texas, um, the Oklahoma region, we've got some showers going on. This continues into Wednesday. Again, moderate to heavy rainfall, severe weather, and flood problems are a sure bet if you are in the Arklatex. Mislatex, if you are in Tennessee, if you're in Kentucky, maybe more rounds of pretty intense rainfall, thunderstorms, strong winds with this system. And then a second piece of energy wants to come in on the backside. That's what the European and the GFS are in disagreement of right now. And then that piece of energy moves into the Northeast. But notice here, not much going on in across the Great Lakes versus the European model that had a much snowier system. You can see the difference here. The GFS has it further south less cold air versus the european model has a little bit more colder air and snow uh, across the northern tier of the united states more uh, definitive front here got a cold front got a warm front versus the gfs still has a warm front and a cold front but it's little less dynamic than what the european model shows and that moves through by the time we go into Thursday into Friday. Now, the GFS wants to keep snow um, pretty intense here for Friday. So there is some agreement on that. But a huge timing differential here. And some much cold Arctic air coming in on the back side of this system. And that rolls through, leaving everyone cold uh, in the wake of the system. By the way, speaking of cold, uh, Mount Washington had wind gusts over 110 miles an hour last night. Wind chills. Get this. Wind chills, negative 110 degrees below zero. How about that? So if you complain about the cold, if you're in the southeast, you haven't complained to your fullest yet if you are on Mount Washington. Boy, I'm telling you, pretty cold up there. Pretty cold. No one can survive in that. No one. All right, so just... Uh, FYI, uh, if you were aware of that, Mount Washington got some of the coldest um, record low temperatures ever recorded up there with wind chill values that were well into the triple digits, below zero. All right, speaking of temperatures, not so much in the way of cold air with this system. Going to be limited on the European model. Here's a look at that. We can see warmer air advection to the north. That's what the thumbnail illustrates. So if you clicked on this video and you saw some orange and red colors, that's why. Because we got warm air advection and we got the blue colors on the thumbnail illustrating our colder air that's going to be moving in in the wake of this. And you can see that very well uh, um, advertised here with the colder air. Single digit temperatures for your Thursday morning in the Rockies into the Pacific Northwest. We got cold air there. Temperatures in the 20s and 30s in the northern tier. But hey, that's above average. That's not cold at all. That's very nice. And temperatures will be above average here because of that warmer air advection. And so you're going to have cold temperatures, but nothing like Mount Washington standards like we had last night. Yeah, that was an ultimate sacrifice. If you guys were up there getting that record low temperatures, hallelujah to you all that got that because you were pretty brave of being that high up where it's very cold and windy. Again, sustained winds up and over 100 miles an hour and wind gusts up and over 110 plus miles an hour. So just kind of reference about that, okay? Just for reference, that's cold. All right, but not as co colder than actually in the Dakotas and Canada. Yeah, some uh, really uh, rare cold temperatures there. Now, let's take a look at why our system is going to be dynamic. Everybody's wondering about this. Why are we going to see snow on the European model and maybe some severe weather? Well, let's take a look at the vorticity here at, 800, at 500 millibars. So why we look at this is because this is telling us how much energy there is in the upper levels of the atmosphere. What we look at here is upper level support. So when we go forward here, we can see uh, by Wednesday... The trough is more neutrally tilted, slightly negatively tilted, and then it becomes more negatively tilted by Wednesday night into Thursday. This is when we could be seeing severe weather, like um, damaging winds, maybe some hail, and maybe a tornado or two. I am not so comfortable saying strong tornadoes. We're not there yet. But we are going to see some sort of severe weather shape up here across the deep south because of this trough that is in place. And then you got a second one that digs underneath it and we can see how this all pinwheels around each other. One lobe of that goes into the Great Lakes 
That's why the system can't kind of get stretched because the energy kind of gets stretched with it. And then we got another positively tilted Vort Max that um, swings through the area. And that might keep the showers going across the Midwest, the upper Midwest, and the eastern seaboard by Saturday and even into Sunday before the weather turns a little calmer, at least for right now. We'll have to keep an eye on what goes on back west, like California. We are in for more storms by next weekend. Now, please don't go anywhere just yet. I have some pretty important announcements to share with you like we had at the beginning of the video. If you haven't already, please, please check out the YouTube channel survey. It is really important that you all please take the survey. If you didn't get that on uh, at the beginning of the video, it is really important because if uh, the more uh, feedback I get, the more responses, the more likely I'm able to kind of tweak my content a little bit in your favor. So that way you like it more, you can come back and watch more of these videos. But please take the survey. I'm, I know it's a lot. There's like 40 different things here, but please take it. Please take your time. It's like a YouTube um, survey. If you have taken them on YouTube before, it's kind of like that but only for my personal channel. But also, be sure to also check out the Mesovort WX um, weather website. It is 100% free to join today. There is no cost whatsoever. It is very, very um, important and helpful if you all can support the, the website. Uh, Ethan, uh, Evan J, almost said Ethan there, oops. Um, Evan J um, put this together, or Evan James in other words. Really good guy. You all gotta support this website that he created here and you can see the about page you can see the home feed you can see a lot that we have uploaded here recently so if you haven't already check out the links in the description um, you can't miss them they're right below the description of this video and below the timestamps of this video all right but anyways if you did enjoy the content share like and subscribe and i'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather content